Hey guys, this is Gene Jensen, and in this month's Lucky Tackle Box, we got a couple of poppers. And I've always wanted to do a popper video, so what a great excuse to sit down and tell you guys everything that I know about a bait that's stuck in my shirt. About a popper. <laughs> Man, those are some sharp hooks on this thing. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the equipment that you're gonna use that's critical when using a popper, okay? You've gotta have monofilament line or braided line, some type of a floating line. I like monofilament because it doesn't get hook, hung up in the treble hooks that much. Braid is just fine too. Um, fluorocarbon is a big time no-go because it will pull your bait down and make it to where it won't pop it. You just won't get the action that you need to out of the bait, so floating line or braid or monofilament or braid okay number two is the rod you seven foot or less medium moderate action rod you've got to have that bend in there to be able to uh, to cast these light baits because a lot of times you, the ones you get are going to be fairly light you also want a shorter rod so you can be a little bit more accurate because this is an around the cover bait you get around this thick cover underneath these lay downs underneath the the uh, the, the uh, overhangs and things like that and so You've got to be able to get in there accurately, and the shorter the rod, the more accurate it is. Seven three to one gear ratio reel is what I prefer. Um, you can use just about any reel; just depends on how fast you want to get the, bait, the fish back to you after they bite. What I love about a popper is it's one of those baits that you can fish really, really slowly and keep it in the strike zone, and it's still going to be going to be effective. The bass are going to hit it because it is one of those reaction baits where it sits there in front of them; they're staring at it. And all of a sudden you pop it a couple more times and they're like, oh crap, I got to get it. And they reach up and they jump up there and they swim up there. They don't jump, but they, anyway, they swim up there and they grab the bait. And, and it's just one of those fun baits to fish. It is a low light conditions bait, okay? So you want to have shaded like I have in this pocket right here. You want to have shade or you want to have clouds or you want to have wind or uh, you want to have early in the morning, late in the evening and all night long are the, are the times where I'd fish a popper. Um, other than that, it's a fairly simple bait to fish. Let's talk about how I fish it, okay? Ideally, well, first of all, let me put my head cam on so I can show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. I always said I'd never use one of these things, but eh, they do come in handy. But anyway, my head cam is great. So, oh, and by the way, this is an external battery. I know I'm gonna get a ton of questions, questions about this. It's an external, external extended life battery on my, on my session. So, uh, but anyway, how to fish a popper. Now, the, the way I fish it, and I know, I know there's other people that fish it different ways, but I will cast it out around that really as close and tight into that cover as I can get without getting hung up. And I let it sit until those circles kind of drift away. And this is a great bait for when there's no ripple on the water, but the bass are shallow. You let it sit and you give it a couple of twitches and you twitch it on a slack line, you're basically, you're walking it like you would a walking frog or a spook or something like that. But remember, the shortest bait, the shorter the bait, the less you have to move your rod. And so those short rods, the shorter the rod, the easier it is to walk a short bait. Um, so anyway, let me show you what I'm talking about. When you're walking the, walking the bait, think of it as you're tapping a drum. You don't want to leave your drumstick on the drum when you go, you know, you know it's a tap. So you're going tap, tap, tap and you bring your your drumstick up off that drum every single tap after every tap same thing with your rod okay you make your cast out there and it's tap and you point your rod right straight back at the bait tap 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 and it's little bitty taps and so the the smaller you can get those taps and the faster you can get that 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 line slack again the better you're going to be at walking a bait now when I'm choosing poppers, I want one that sits in the water, nose up just like this. I don't want one that lays flat. This one lays flat. This is one of the ones that came in the Lucky Tackle box, but which I might switch to before the day's out. This live target sits just like this, and that's what I want. It means it's weighted further in the back, and it sits down, and it, and it offers a better um, better target and a better, easier bite for the bass. And I just get more bites on it just like this. Plus, with it being back weighted like that, 
it flies, when you make the cast, it flies through the water backwards or thrice flies through the air backwards and doesn't tumble. And the less you can get it to tumble, the tighter that you can get it into cover. So for instance, I could get it right up in that hole right there without a problem. So that's exactly what I would, I would do. So I'm probably gonna switch out of this from this one to this one as I'm fishing this heavy cover or this thick cover. And, uh, and we'll see what we can do to catch one. You see how that bait sits in the water? I want it nose up just like that when it sits in the water. That's ideal. All right, so. Pitch it around cover. Let's see how good this thing walks. Oh, it walks like a dream. Okay. Now the key to this bait is you want to fish it fairly slow. Okay, you throw it out, you let it sit. Like I said, you let it sit and wait and wait for the circles to get away, and then you fish it pop, pop, pause, pop, 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 pause, pop, pop. And you're just you're pausing for a long period of time. It's a great bait because it stays in the strike zone a lot longer. And if you have those baits that are in those bass that are in thick cover and they're real finicky and they don't really want to move much, this is one of those. If it stays in that cover in that strike zone longer, they're gonna it's gonna piss them off enough to go to have them come out and to at least investigate and grab it with their mouths. So this live target one is a really good popper. Anyway. So that's the basics of fishing it. Just get around thick cover. Don't be afraid to throw it in there. And that's what's so critical about using a popper that, uh, that has, that's, has a lot of, of weight to the back end of it. You get better pops anyway, but you also are able to cast it into thick cover and not get it hung up near as much. So look right here, we got a tree that's pointing out towards me. You don't want to fish from the, from the trunk part of the tree. You want to fish from up here. You're liable to get, you won't get hung up near as much. I'm going to get as close to that tree as my knucklehead cast can make it. And I'm just going to fish it right along the edge of that tree. I'm going to try not to move too fast from my boat. The wind's not helping me any, but I'm just going to fish it slow. Pop, pop, pause, pop, pop, pause. You're just trying to pull them up from whatever thick cover they're in. Not a lot of thick cover on this lake, a lot of overhangs. Um, a lot of lay downs, but there's not a lot of really thick cover. It's going to be hard to catch a fish in this lake because they're all out about 10 feet deep on some rock piles that are, oh, right out there. I ain't going to get them to come up out of that for a topwater bait, but hopefully there's a couple of stragglers up here, especially now that the clouds came back out. Now, the ideal times and situations to fish this thing is low light conditions, so low visibility for the, bit, for the bass early in the morning, late in the evening all night long when it's cloudy in the shade these little shade pockets you get are ideal for it um, up under docks and around docks is really good so don't be afraid to pull it out and try it in different situations but it really does shine when the bass are shallow and cruising or they're shallow and up into into heavy cover and in during those low light conditions all right so let me t let me tell you a little modification that you can do to a popper let me bring this sucker in um that I used to do years and years ago. And no, it's not filing down the bill. We don't do that anymore. Um, used to do it back when the poppers didn't walk, but now most of the ones directly out of the box will walk for you. But one of the things is, is Mike Buca, the bull shad guy, Mike Buca, uh, that invented the bull shad, also made up a, a, a lure years ago that he called the Alabama rig. And no, it's not that chandelier looking thing that people throw around. You remove the front treble hook you put a larger, one size larger, regular hook on here. It doesn't have to have feathers, regular hook on here. And then about an 18 inch fluorocarbon leader tied off of that back hook, back hook. And then another treble hook that has the feathers tied around it way back here. And if you fish a, a spotted bass lake where the spots school up a lot, like Lake Lanier, like Lake Altoona, like a lot of these spotted bass Coosa River lakes and things like that, that is an ideal bait to use. You fish it a little bit different. And I wish I had one tied up so I could show you guys, but I haven't fished them in years. They're in a box somewhere in my barn. But um, the, the, what you do is you throw it on a spinning rod because you've got that long leader and you don't really want um, your leader to get wrapped around your hook a lot. And it does every once in a while, but you make a lice, uh, and, you know, it's kind of like a Carolina rig cast. You let it load up in the back and you, th and you cast it out. And then when you pop it, it's a hard pop. Whap, you just basically rip it through the water. And the bigger the poppers with the bigger the mouths, the better it is. And it calls those spotted bass up out of the, out of the, um, the depths. And if they're not willing to commit 
on that topwater bait, they'll see that doll fly, as we call it, that little uh, dress treble down 18 inches below it, and they will hit that one every single time. But you have to set the hook quick, and they will take it deep, man. It is amazing. And a lot of times you'll catch two fish on a cast. So little tip for you when it comes to a popper. I mean, literally you go whap, and you just, that's how you fish it, just pop, 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 and just make the biggest splashes you can and uh, it would, uh, it, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Man, when they were on that thing, you could catch the crap out of those spotted bass. Anyway, just a little tip for you. Big one. <laughs> Del hook catfish. <laughs> Tail hook flat here. That was fun. Well guys, I wish I had a, an epic blow up for you or a big fish on this popper bait, um, but I'm gonna leave that up to you guys. Take this thing out, get it out on the water, and, uh, and go catch a freaking monster fish on a popper. They're not that difficult to fish, just tend to be forgotten. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that it came on my Lucky Tackle Box. You guys check out Lucky Tackle Box. They're some new sponsors of mine, and uh, I'm really excited to be with them because they're, they want me, well, they want to help me teach people how to fish, which is great. But uh, like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water, go out and catch some fish, and have a great day. We'll see you.